Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this Houdini tutorial we are going to discuss a way how to move a curve for a river down a height field. So instead of just slapping it on to the terrain like this, we will make it shift away from large mountains and just flow more naturally through the terrain. So this works um, simply put by a curve. The incoming curve is like that. And we are going to use a for loop that is basically just moving it step by step down the hill until it settles somewhere in the valley. Maybe after 20 steps or so, you'll have this kind of result. All right, let's uh, just start with a new Houdini session and try to rebuild this from scratch. First of all, what we are going to need is a height field. So you would just um, build up a height field and use a noise to displace it. We can leave it the way it is, although it is um, quite good to lower the resolution of the height field for our um, iteration process where we are moving down the slope. We are happy and way more uh, clean if we are just um, taking 20% of this. And additionally, you can also blur the height field even further by just cranking up the blur. So this is way easier and smoother to move a curve along. And this curve can be set or initialized as a line, um, which is just maybe 800 units long. It's uh, pointing along the z-axis and is located at minus 400 z. So the interesting point is a height field is actually just a two-dimensional flat volume, which has varying height values. So the good news is we can just sample from our curve directly the positions from this flat volume field. So let me just set this up. We are giving the curve a few points and jitter them. Just make sure we jitter them only in flat land. And we can do this quite extremely. So let's say 250 units will give us this kind of curve. Now we can resample this slightly. So 0.1 would be way too small. It's more recommended to maybe use 50 or so and set it to subdivision curves. Well, let's do 20. Now the idea is to push these points in a for loop where um, we are just asking for, well, the curve should be pushed away from the height field. So within uh, every volume there are gradients. Gradients are basically pointing up the hill. And we can use th this. So we just define a vector called grad and we use the volume gradient function to access from the second input stream from our height field based on our current position, the gradient. And this gradient can be used to push our curve points, but we should make sure to normalize the gradient first. So that way, this would be one meter pointing away from the slope. And we can just multiply this by a certain step size. Now what's going to happen is that starting from here, our curve will be moved away. Now, what you can see is that it gets more and more stretched, like the distance between the points is increasing and we also have some overshootings and some intersections. So you would just resample this iteratively. I will give it a length of 20. So that way it remains smoother and you guessed right. We can also use a smooth node to improve the results. 
of course it's all dependent on how far we push it in each iteration and in total how many iterations we let it run through. It may make sense to look at this in conjunction. So this would be our um, landscape and this would be just the offset curve. Now let's use a volume wrangle on the height field and just make sure we are not working on the resampled height field, but actually the full resolution height field coming straight from the noise. And this should be manipulated based on the distance towards the curve. So our volume wrangle will basically start with measuring the distance or the shortest distance to the curve based on our position. And we also would like to know the primitive number, which is going to be zero because currently we only have one curve and also the primitive UV, which is basically the position on the curve. So let's just initialize this primitive and UV. And the distance is something we would like to resample, excuse me, we would should like to remap. So let's just call this mask. And I like to use this smooth function for this. So I can say this is the width minimum and the width maximum. We are going to calculate um, based on the distance and we want a smooth roll off of 0.5. Now width min and max is something I want the user to define. So width min would be channel float minimum width and we will do a maximum as well so that way we can define the width of the river all right let's just enable these and make them much wider i will initialize it with 10 and this one with 20 and give it plenty of room on our slider to play around with. Now this smooth function is returning a value of zero if we are below the width min and a value of one if we are above the maximum and it will smoothly interpolate between zero and one if our dist value is between the minimum and the maximum. And this is again just the roll off value uh, you can also play around with. All right, let's quickly visualize this and say mask is equal to mask. So you can tell it's inverted. So we should just put 1.0 minus in front of the smooth function. So this is basically a way to mask out the riverbed. Now, one thing I don't like as much is that um, it's starting somewhere and there's a spring, so it should be rather narrow and it can go wider uh, when it's running down the hill. So I would like to also get in the information about the curve U, which is starting with zero and then growing until it reaches one. And in order to get this in from our second input, we will just define the float u. I will call it ucrv for curve. And um, it's just a matter of um, using the prim uv function. And this is why it makes sense to access curve u over the primitive and the primitive uv coordinate. So now what we can do is we can basically multiply the width max by UCRV and you'll see that it's shrinking. We do the same for the minimum and then you see it starts very, very small and gets wider and wider. Additionally, well, we can also invert this. So the, U, the curve U value can be put like that 
and that way we're starting off small and getting wider and wider. Now I personally would like to have a bit more of a control, I don't want it to start that small. So we can use UCRV within a channel ramp which will be called uh, width scale or let's say scale width and this will be based on UCRV. So let's make sure to put U in there in the mask to update this. And now we have a nice little slider where we can say you should start at this width and end with the full width. And you're still in control of these. Now another benefit of having the UCRV value is that we are also able to create some noise based on this. So let's put N to a noise based on UCRV as well. And we can add an amplitude there. I'll just make it very extreme and also a scale. We will play around with this before we expose some sliders and I would like to just add N to the width and then it can be multiplied. Um, this was the minimum. We can do the same to the maximum. Um, we just have to play around with this to understand better uh, how it's looking or what's it looking like in the end. So um, this is the amplitude. So I can just call this scale cliff. Channel float will be scale or cliff underscore scale. And then we can just say this is the scale cliff. So we are in control of this effect in terms of its amplitude. Let's just give it a bit more room on the slider. And this should be working like so. So it's basically adding on top of it. So it may be better to um, multiply. But then the amplitude needs to be much, 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 much lower. All right, the next part would be um, to define the frequency of the cliff. So you would just say for the user, it's called cliff frequency. Now this would be the replacement for the 100 we put in there. And of course, this also needs to uh, have a bit of a different range, I think, but let's just play around with this to make sure. So the noise is referring to you and the frequency should simply be higher. And you can see you can get some wobbling or some high frequency changes in there. All right, now how can we um, manipulate the height? Because so far it's just a um, paint stroke, if you like. Uh, first of all, um, let's switch the gradient, negate it, so it's really avoiding height and not climbing up the hill, which looks way better. So it's just a matter of switching plus and minus here. And the other thing uh, we should discuss now is, um, yeah, basically how to push it down. As a reference, I use the low resolution 
terrain on my third input, which is probably a bit dirty, but um, it should work. So let's just say I want to know the height. Float height low, which is just being obtained by sampling a volume from the third input by the name height based on our position. So um, we can for a test just set our height to a lerp, so a, a mix of our current height, the other voxel field's height based on our mask. So you see it changed somewhat. It also got smoother, which is a good effect. And then we can just um, subtract from it the depth. So let's just make this a bit more explicit. So depth would be here, depth river. And this is another slider we need. So depth underscore river can be called river depth. And this should also have a good amount of uh, space for the user. So we can say, I don't know, start off with 10, give room up to 100. And now let's just play around with this. So I can drag it down into the terrain like that. And all of a sudden, those zigzag lines make a lot more sense. Great. So um, this would be the most important steps. Of course, you can now use before and afterwards, use all these height field nodes. And I think the most popular one is the erosion. So um, I will not overdo it, but a few steps at least should help to make this terrain look a bit more natural. So you would just iterate over this and freeze it at this frame. I've chosen four. You can go much, much further depending on the style you like to achieve. And I will switch off the visualization later on. So this is all my little puddles, rivers and downstreams and debris and whatnot. So once this has been finished in calculation, which is of course dependent on the resolution I can just switch it off like that and um, yeah, keep improving the effect. So for me, these um, zigzags are a bit too extreme. So um, we would just turn down the scale. We would also play around with the minimum width to make it a bit smoother, but also wider at the same time. And I mean, we discussed now all sorts of sliders, also the frequency, which can be lowered, of course. And then it would be time to, um, again, maybe hit the erosion and enjoy the result. All right, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on the YouTube channel. If it's something more complex or something entirely different, better ask on the Otforce forums. Thank you for watching.